This is going to be my quick one part video review of the 15 inch Lincoln Classic Briefcase by Copper River Bags. Um, if you are interested in a more in depth review, I will have a three part video review coming up later. This is just basically a quick introduction to the bag, giving an idea of generally how it looks, and a quick video so you don't have to spend a lot of your time trying to figure out everything that I talk about in my upcoming videos. So, this particular bag is made by Copper River Bags, it's their 15 inch bag. I bought this specifically to be a carry-on bag that I use um, a day to day when I travel for work a lot. Um, it's thick enough that it fits well as a personal item under the seat in front of you without a lot of space to go around. So if you fill this bag up, it perfectly fits under any airline seat that I've flown on. Um, it's also a bag that's much, much lighter than a lot of the other leather bags out there that allows you to carry more without feeling really fatigued when you're running through the airport, like when you're at Atlanta's airport and it takes you over a mile of walking to get from one side to the other side of the airport. It's nice to have a light bag that you're carrying with you. So starting with the basics of this bag, if we start off with the shoulder straps, it comes with a single shoulder pad, which works fine. I find that I almost always use one pad more than the other, even in double padded bags. It has a nice width to it. It's not neoprene filled like some of the saddleback ones, which is fine. I don't find an issue with comfort. Straps themselves are secured with these nice little um, lobster claw ends, um, harking to the older designs by Saddleback. Um, has a single rivet across them. I do kind of love this design, the rivets. Um, they look really unique, and I'm not really sure quite how they get this design into it, but it has the two different colors on the one end of the rivet, which just, it looks nice. It's very visually compelling the way that that's designed. These are all unlined, so it's raw, kind of the back end of the chrome tan leather on the other end, which is fine. If you love leather, this is kind of what you look for. You want to be able to kind of feel and touch all different sides of the leather. Um, I have none, haven't noticed any issues in terms of the overall strength of this causing issues with the leather stretching or anything. I'll let you know if we run into those issues at some point in the future. Has a nice little buckle with multiple buckle holes to choose from to choose the appropriate length. I'm about 6'1", and this is the natural hole that I end up at, which does mean that if you're significantly taller than me, um, this bag might be a little bit short for you, though I would think that with the extra, you know, two or three inches that you have here, even if you're a little bit taller, you should be relatively okay. Um, it has two fixed um, holes to hold the extra tongue of the uh, strap that comes across. And the way I use it, um, it fits perfectly in the first hole without too much hanging out on the back side. So, uh, pretty decent strap, like it. The handle, very long. There's no O-ring or D-ring here for your hand to get caught on, so you can easily grab and hold on to the bag. Um, nice long length to it. You can grab your hand along any part of it. Um, the way the leather is made is kind of one leather strap that goes around both parts of the D-rings and then another piece of leather that wraps all the way around. You kind of naturally rest your thumb on one side and your fingers on the other side. And it gives you a very secure feel to this bag. The leather of this bag. This is what I absolutely love. This leather is gorgeous. If you look here, you can see, you can just mark up the leather just by running your fingers along with it. Um, after I got this bag, as you can see in the unboxing video, I just did a little bit of conditioning. I used a little bit of Chamberlain's number one, used a cotton applicator pad, kind of scrubbed a little bit to pull up the nap to this leather. And now that I have it, I absolutely love it. Um, it is as good as the leather that you see on Saddleback, especially it's velvety tobacco. Um, let me grab one of my velvety tobacco Saddleback bags to show you the difference in this leather. So this is one of my Saddleback velvety tobacco bags, the um, laptop bag. You can see here it has this beautiful kind of velvet to it. This is one of the older bags that they created. And this one, almost exactly the same. The advantage of the Copper River color of this bag is that it is a lot darker. And the darker color means that you don't worry about it getting stained or getting dirty. And it looks very professional on top of it. Um, I would say that this color is probably closest to the dark coffee brown color Saddleback, though a much, much lighter shade of it is just stunningly beautiful. The bag here has a back pocket that fits one full sheet of paper. I know that this sounds silly, but if you watch my other videos, this is one of my biggest complaints about these leather bags. 
that they create what they call magazine pocket, but they can't fit a sheet of paper in. So if you use this bag for anything in a professional setting, you cannot, in some of the bags, fit a piece of paper that you're gonna hand someone in a meeting into the bag and have it sit in which the top lip of the paper doesn't stick out. Which means that if you're walking from meeting to meeting, the top piece gets crumpled, it looks unprofessional and doesn't look nice. The way this bag is designed, you can get a full sheet of paper in and out, it looks nice and crisp, and you don't have to worry about the top piece of that paper, the corners kind of rubbing against your body and making it look unprofessional and handing a client or someone a piece of paper that looks as if you know it's been wrinkled and you don't really know what you're doing. The bag itself has two side pockets here. So you can see here, pretty decent depth to it. Um, takes up the full skit length, which is five and a half inches. The bag has no unnecessary D-rings anywhere. There's only two rings here that hold the sides to it. Since I'm using this as a carry-on bag, I actually don't have the luxury of being able to attach too much of the outside of the bag because the size then would grow too large for me to be able to fit it under a seat in front of me. So this is actually the perfect length of what I need without any unnecessary pieces. The side straps of this bag. If I turn it to the side here and you look, the side straps are designed in a length in which it perfectly falls the length of the bag without unnecessary tongue from the side strap flopping around and looking unprofessional. Almost everyone that has a saddlebag tucks in these side straps and then when they use it, they pull it back out. And the reason they almost always do that is if this was a saddlebag, the strap would be hanging off the bottom of this chair right now because it would be just far, far too long. These straps are short enough that even if you don't use them and you just let them hang naturally, it looks really, really nice. It's aesthetically pleasing. You can't tell me that the designers didn't think of this and measure the exact length that they needed for it to sit comfortably like this. This is, I think, how side straps should be designed. Now, granted, the saddlebacks can hold more in terms of width, which means they need more variability in the length of the straps, while this bag can't hold as much, which means that it does allow you to deal with shorter side straps and still be able to actually get real world use out of them. The interior of the bag. The interior of the bag is lined with a black smooth pigskin lining. You can see the rivets popping through and the center strap being sewn on, as well as the, pocket, um, the handle being sewn on, no rivets there, no metal bar or piece of leather underneath to protect the top and give it rigidity, which means that it is a little floppy along the top. We'll see how this kind of does over time as we use this bag more and more, if this becomes an area of compromise. But for now, I'd rather sacrifice that weight for a much lighter bag, especially when I'm carrying this, you know, long, long distances, traveling outside of different cities and different airports. The center pocket of this bag, a single gusket with two small pockets for you to hold your things and then this large center gusket for you to put everything else you need. Um, the center gusket is absolutely perfect because it allows me to fill the bag how I want it filled and also I know if I fill this bag to the absolute maximum, I'm okay. I can still put this in the scene in front of me. While with my other leather bags, the maximum width of the bag here that the gusket could expand to is long, is uh, wider than the height of the ground to the bottom of the seat, which means that sometimes you can't fit this under the seat in front of you if you fill my other briefcases up slightly too much. So this bag kind of fits my overall needs that I want for a carry-on bag. You know, as a personal item, I have a nice back pocket that I can use for my meetings. I have a beautiful bag with gorgeous leather that allows me to enjoy my leather as I'm traveling and going to meetings. It's a great conversation starter and conversation piece. It's very, very well designed that looks professional in my professional settings, but also looks kind of rugged and everyday use enough that as I'm going through the airport, it doesn't seem weird that, you know, I'm wearing, you know, sweatpants and a t-shirt and carrying a bag like this rather than dressing business casual. This kind of works with both. So I really, really enjoy it. Um, this is my brief video review of the Copper River 15-inch uh, Lincoln Classic Briefcase.